I'm in the... Oh, I'm in the Freddie Mercury room. Nice. Yeah. Died of... What? He died of... AIDS? AIDS. Sad. It yeah, was a sad, sad day. That's not something to laugh about, sorry. Sky Ferrer was right. Everything is embarrassing. But that's what happens when you wear your heart on your sleeve and inject your emotions directly into your music. Only Sky could sing in such a shy way over hard 80s Janet Jackson Pleasure Principle beats and make it an overnight indie pop hit. Nothing I grew up on Tumblr, and when this dropped, it changed everything. It felt like watching one of my peers rise from cult obscurity to mainstream recognition. To me, this will always be linked to my teen years on the internet. Let's explore. Ferreira was born Sky Tanya Ferreira on July 8th, 1992 in LA. She grew up always knowing she wanted to sing and trained classically. <laughs> grandmother was Michael Jackson's makeup artist, and she didn't really know he was that famous. He was just Michael. When I was younger, I used to go to Neverland all the time, Michael Jackson ranch thing. There was this like spider ride and that was new and it would play Scream because it totally looked like the Scream music video. I fucking puked everywhere. No, I didn't just puke, I like yarfed. <laughs> 80s pop icons do not escape her. Her single, Lost in My Bedroom's Chorus, sounds nearly identical to Kate Bush's Running Up That Hill. In the same way that she was a breath of fresh air in pop music, she also retains that nostalgic 80s pop and 90s grunge feel. But it took her a while to get there. Ferreira had a strange childhood. She was randomly mute for a while. She just stopped talking. She had a scary encounter as a child as well. She scratched an intruder in the face who assaulted her after he broke in. The next morning, she saw her neighbor with key marks on his face. She referenced her elective muteness and her attack in the song I Blame Myself. Ten years old without a voice, I feel like nothing's really changed now I'm just a little older. It was because um, I stopped talking for ten years. I literally just stopped talking. I like went mute. Like I, I don't know. I, I, I was like, I have nothing to say, so I'm not going to speak at all. She got into the music industry quite young. She dropped out of school early and never really had an interest in its forced and draining environment. She left at 14. I remember I got kicked out of high school because I had tons of truancies. I just didn't show up. I would pretend to go to school, but then I would take the bus anywhere else I could. So she knew she needed a job to leave school. So she dropped some music on none other than MySpace, the internet fame maker for the Millennial Pop Act. She released some tracks and in 2009 attracted the attention of Bloodshy and Avant. She soon signed with Parlophone. She got signed very young at just 16 and was molded to be very, very different from who she is today. She could really sing, which was a plus, but she could also really write. They seem more interested in her face than even her voice. Her writing and production skills? Nope, they could care less. Sky said in an interview that People think they can treat you however they want to just because you signed a deal with them, as if they own you. They wanted a Britney for the internet era, some oversexed young thing, and it didn't bode well with Sky. Speaking of Spears, Ferreira was also very heavily controlled by powerful, powerful industry people who wanted to sell. Her first official single was titled Seventeen. She recalls being taken into a basement by industry execs and told how to be a woman, how to market herself how to be sexy and compliant. She had zero industry knowledge. I signed a record deal to get out of high school, she explained. Single after single, she finally found her sound on the grungy Courtney Love-inspired red lips. 
warning for arachnids. This was the rock and roll sky buried under lush and heavy production that just barely pierced through in her debut single that was merely abandoned by her overseers. From here, the ghost EP and Everything is Embarrassing would finally give her the industry recognition she deserved. Poppy, sure, but Sky, fully Sky. We show at the park on Christie Street, but I used to sit on the steps all the time and we actually, with Sandy, and we ran into Dev Hines, who actually might be one of the reasons why I'm on this cover, because I wrote Everything's Embarrassing with him and it was kind of really random. She suddenly stood out from other pop stars that her industry was trying to mold her into for money. Dev Hines produced the track and seems to contradict what Sky mentioned about writing the song herself. He played a demo of the song live, and it drove a wedge between their friendship. Sky said she was mystified at any confusion of her own ability to write her own songs, and that she was sad that they were no longer close. Before the fallout, they performed the song together. So many other opportunities opened up as well. Sky had been modeling since the beginning of her career. She ventured more into acting as well and increased her profile and marketability as a do-it-all entertainer. Now her debut album was highly anticipated. It was a tumultuous process because of lack of industry support. At this time, Sky revealed on Instagram that she made more money modeling than touring. In fact, she used much of her own money to create the album and associated music videos. When everything came into place, Sky was arrested and charged with possession of heroin and resisting arrest. She and boyfriend Zachary Cole Smith from the band Dive were taken into custody. It literally happened the day after I announced my record and I like walked Mark to Jacobs, which was a huge deal for me. And I was like, oh, everything's falling into place. And then that happens. I was like, and they hand me and these the underwear that are like this big. And the rape pamphlet. Literally, yeah. And a rape pamphlet. And I was like, this is the worst yeah. thing that's ever yeah. happened. This may have been the most press the indie pop star has ever gotten. Coincidentally, controversy in her own life mirrored her artistic life when Nighttime My Time became one of the most banned album covers in the United States. The album is named after the lines from Twin Peaks' Fire Walk With Me. The sounds coming from Sky in 2013 were incredible, just catchy alternative rock bliss with this accidental pop appeal that continued on from her success with Everything is Embarrassing. Sky attempts to explain that pop magic in her music. She says, I don't have a pop sensibility, but for some reason my songs end up being popular than expected. Despite her label treating her like a shelved product, the album performed quite well. Ferrera feels it would have performed even better if she had the right support. She planned a tour for the album's namesake, but it was canceled. She has fans, but didn't have the numbers for anything but a few TV spots, festivals, and opening for Miley Cyrus on her 2014 Bangers tour. What happens when a studio seeks to recreate the magic of an artist with the wrong spell? Halsey. As time went on, Sky's releases became stagnant, and a space opened up for a product duplicate in the form of Halsey. Apparently, the label they shared was trying to use the exact people Sky worked with on her brilliant and well-received title track music video for Nighttime My Time. Things got pretty nasty as Sky defended her artistic integrity against the more top 40 friendly Halsey. Cocky as ever, she thinks her work ethic has put her further into the mainstream pop world and not a deliberate and spiteful push against an artist who knows true rebellion like Sky. Not just artistic rebellion. Yes, she left her more bubblegum pop sound for a more alternative twist to her pop strides, but she also had to rebel against powerful, grown men at her label who had the big Britney Spears hypersexualized career planned for her. She rejected it. Her nostalgic sounds make long hiatuses for new music worth the wait because, sonically, Ferrera's old 80s synth pop and 90s grunge is timeless even at its most modernized. She's not afraid to dig into her toughest critics upon her return. Her latest single, Don't Forget, is incredibly fitting for someone who's had such a hiatus. Masochism is an interesting title for an album. 
Sky seems to be incredibly masochistic in her recounts of her emotions in her music, self-loathing and irresponsibly obsessed with her own social, moral, and relationship failures to the point of seclusion and self-blame to cope. I hope the record lives up to the recklessness of Nighttime My Time and the suggestive nature of the title, especially visually. Subscribe to join the U Universe. I want to do, and I don't know why, but suddenly I thought of teeth. I was like, I just want to just put two V's on my in my middle fingers, and he's like, what? I was like, ah. <laughs> and I was like, I'll probably regret that in um, a few months, but it's okay. And then I got a teardrop because this was right before Lil Wayne was going to jail. Even though that also means I killed somebody, but I didn't kill anybody. Sorry.